We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. You're the show can't be expert the voice, but you wanna set ground. A vision of weakness, you don't, but your voice is so loud. I'm the butt of your joke, cause I draw more girls you hang round. You kill to make your imprint on my soul. Good evening, welcome to NUFC Matters, the Fans Forum. Uh, delighted to be joined by George, Darren, Sam, Kevin, Ian and Magnus. And uh, as you can see, Ian is sunburnt in Tenerife. He'll be on and off uh, as he tries to get his signal uh, sorted out. But uh, plenty to talk about, two matches to reflect on. Uh, of course, Newcastle playing uh, West Ham at the weekend and coming away with a 4-3 win. Still a biggest belief how they managed to achieve that. Uh, after the first 70 minutes, but they did uh, a wonderful three points. Um, talk of Europe was back on the cards. Then they took on Everton uh, last night at St James's Park uh, in a game which I think we all knew would be slightly different to the West Ham game, and it was. Uh, Newcastle dominated the match, uh, it has to be said, last night um, and, and were 1 0 up. But you always felt if they didn't get that second goal, uh, that it was uh, it was going to be. Um, it was going to be a, a nail-biting finish, and that's what it was. A penalty given against Paul Dummett and Newcastle United coming away with a point from a game where they should have had all three. So uh, we'll get the lads' opinions. Uh, first of all, George, um, yes. looking back at the West Ham game and the Everton game, George, give us your views on both those games. Frustration is the word I would use. <laughs> Frustration. In the West Ham game, um, we... We did. We played quite well, but got the simple things wrong. The very simple things in football were got wrong. Three or four times in the first half, there were one twos which would have let somebody into the penalty area and a shot on goal. And the runner stopped, stopped to admire his handiwork instead of running for the for the the the, the, the ball back. Just stopped and watched. And and if if we just got if if we'd got one more goal then. We would have got a hat full against West Ham, but then the inevitable happened, didn't it? They got a couple of chances and they took them. Uh, the second one with a little bit of help of the referee, but that's that's by the by. Uh, but overall, that referee was absolutely awful uh, on on Saturday. Um, the plus is that they didn't they didn't give up. They just kept having a go, and once once they got the three two, um, just I just knew we would win. It just had that feel about it. And it also showed me why we didn't buy Paqueta, uh, Bruno's friend. Because when the second goal went in, he went home. He never touched the bloody ball after that. He was hopeless after that. Completely just bottled it. Absolutely, totally. West Ham fans must be hacked off with him if he plays like that every week. But as soon as they went down, he was no good to them. Absolutely no good. Um, the, big, the big pluses, of course, were... The substitutions, um, Barnes, Hall, uh, and the one word I'd use for both of them is pace. The pace just frightened West Ham to death. They couldn't cope. And then some brilliant football for the goals. Uh, I mean, Isak's through ball for the for the uh, for the first one. I mean, you, you you know he gets credit for being a, a goal scorer, but he's a pretty good footballer as well, which is amazing. And Barnes, well. 
A left winger who cuts in and scores a brilliant goal with his right foot. Now, don't get that very often. <laughs> James of Spark, we've got a bloody good left winger, but he doesn't know how to use his right foot. Well, we've got one that does now. No, that, that we, we, lots of lots of uh, positives. Um, but the frustrations, again, is that at, at a crucial stage, we had two open goals, one to Isaac and one to Longstaff, and they both hit the Blum and Corner flag. I mean, it, 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 it was hard at the miss than it was to score. They were so close to the goal. And that, that, that just absolute frustration. But overall, what an exciting game. I mean, you, you, you'd you pay a lot of money to see that every week. It, it really was exciting. But the, the big plus, they kept on going. They didn't stop. And uh, it just... Um, it just was great to be there. It was one of those matches where you, you'll, in years to come, you'll say, oh, I was, I was at the 4-3 match at, uh, against West Ham. Um, and it was the start of uh, uh, Dan Byrne and Barris and Eddie Howe for me and demonstrating that he's a centre-back. He's not a left-back. He was brilliant um, at that centre of defence. You know, he's, he's headed clearances. It, it always talk when I was around it, if you're going to head the ball out the penalty area, get it as close to the halfway line as you can. Don't just drop it at your feet or at somebody else's feet. Get it out the penalty area. Well, Dan Byrne does that every time when he's in the middle of the defence. He just can be relied on to do that. So I'm afraid that he, um, there isn't any arguments for me again anymore about uh, where Dan should be playing. Um, the, he's, he's a target at left back now for, for club. <coughs> That's not fair on him. I mean, he gives a hundred percent wherever he is, but that's that, that's not fair on him. Uh, but uh, again, referee was absolutely awful. Um, let um, West Ham away with uh, with murder. Lascelles got a serious injury, but it was a foul that caused the injury. He 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 got his, his leg taken by the centre forward and held back, and it was when he pulled out of that tackle. He, he, he knocked his his, his tendon. Uh, you know, you, you, you could see it even from the stands, for goodness sake. And yet, uh, the referee didn't even give a, give the foul. Uh, and, he, and that centre forward got away with one or two more. That little defender who who they took off eventually should have walked uh, long before he, he was substituted. But no, the referee just uh, let let it go and let it go and let it go. So, um, yeah, not not the best official. And then back to our old friend VAR. Does it really take five minutes to decide if somebody's offside? Is it re if it does, then we're, we're playing the wrong game. They're trying to kill the game, really. The beautiful game's gone down the pan if they go on like that. To to sit and wait and wait and wait and wait until until some idiot at Stockley Park decides it's offside. Their own lines of rulers and all the rest of it, for goodness sake. And one last grouse about offside. At least six times on Saturday, there were off, uh, clearly obvious offsides to anybody sitting in the stand. But what do they do? They let the play go on, and the player that's offside approaches the ball, then the flag goes up. Meanwhile, players get injured. Players get injured. Their goalkeeper got injured. You know, and, and, and they substitute them at half time. And that was all because. The linesman couldn't put his flag up when he really was already seen the man was offside. That's just the nonsense. As I say, the per the person that invented that nonsense never played football in her life, in my view. Um, so, but overall, what an exciting game! Uh, it, it, the, the thrill to be in that stand uh, to come from three one to four four three uh, is a good, is a very positive memory as far as I'm concerned. Do you want us to go on the last night? Yeah, going to last night as well, George. Same word, frustration. Uh, could easily have been well out of sight by half time, but we just didn't have the the metal to to, to do it. Isaac again shown shown his great skill, but uh, with 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 little help. Um, and uh, uh, again, the positives are all about the youngins that 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 fill the holes. I mean, we were threadbare last night. We've got to accept that. Um, and then uh, uh, bigger frustration is is that uh, you know on comes uh, Paul Dummett, who hasn't played for a while, but that shouldn't matter. He's a professional footballer; he should be ready on the second. 
and against one of the smallest people on the field, he gives a penalty away. The bloke wouldn't have scored even if he'd got let him go past. Yeah, I don't think the bloke would have would have would have scored a goal. And they're the decisions defenders have to make. You, you, the, the judgment about whether you go in or you don't go in. Well, he he didn't go in. He got hold of the bloke, and it was an obvious penalty, which is criminal for me and and uh, uh, heart rending for for everybody in the ground because uh, we deserved to win that game. Um, overall. Um, it wasn't brilliant. It, while Saturday was was brilliant and exciting, last night was uh, ordinary and fairly dull, to be honest. Uh, but we still should have won it. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, the dumbing went on, frustrated me. Well, why why put Young Murphy on the bench if you're not going to give him an opportunity? He had a golden opportunity for ten minutes against a very ordinary team to give that lad ten minutes. Uh, or 15 minutes on the pitch were an ideal scenario, and yet he left him sitting there. What does the kid think that that old has been going on? And I've sitting here. What, what's my future here? You know, he won't think like that. But but you wouldn't blame him if he did. Um, so that was that was a frustration for me. But uh, um, and once again, um, oh, I hate to be a detractor of Eddie Howe, but his tactics on Saturday, for example. The minute we scored, West Ham changed the formation. Flooded the midfield so we couldn't play. But what did we do? We just sat back and let it happen. No response, really. No response. And and it, it took until, you know, well into the second half before he decided to do anything different with the substitutions, which some would say were forced on him because of injuries. Um, but, any, but last night, the same... Uh, there were things early on. You could see that Everton was set up for a nil-nil. They weren't there, there to win on a football match. They were there to get a nil-nil. Frustrating thing is, is that uh, they didn't get a nil-nil, but because of Dummett's mistake, they got a 1-1, which gold does to them. But really, um, you know, add, add up the points we've lost against the people below. Her. It's desperate. Absolutely desperate. Add up the points we've won against the people above us. We've done fantastic. If we'd performed as well against the ones behind us, we have it against the ones above us. We would be sitting fourth top of the league now. We wouldn't be sitting scrambling round to hope that we'll get a European place. It would already be in the bag. So, great Saturday. Frustrating sometimes. Very frustrating last night. But have to acknowledge thread based side and bench. Um, the options were, were limited, but uh, the options he took, in my view, uh, how we made the mistake. I, I would have had Murphy on for very, even if it was only ten minutes, give the lad a chance to to show his metal. And uh, um, yeah, a match we lost really. Well, two points thrown away for me. Um, but uh, there you are. Those that think a draw was was a good result, a fair result. Well, I don't think so. I think we we did enough to win it and just threw it away. So there you are. There's there's uh, there's my misery for the week. <laughs> no misery, George. Just a, an honest assessment, I think. Um, just to remind people tonight, I am going live. Members only. Uh, run about quarter past seven. You'll get a notification if you remember. If you haven't joined the channel, please do. I've gifted ten free ones again tonight. Um, so there's a chance for you to come on. Uh, just something that we're going to trial over the next couple of months. So if you want to come on, um. Get uh, get your notification, jump on at about quarter past seven. Uh, but you can get your membership by clicking join on the channel. Okay, Darren, um, your assessment of the two games, West Ham and Everton. Yeah, West Ham first half was like a roller coaster ride. It started off good, and then it went bad. And they conceded, and then players, the cells got in. You, I don't, I don't think it was a free kick, George. I think we just, um, I just think. Oh, he left I, I, his I foot. That, I know, I, left I, I, I his foot in, man. I, I watched. I watched it. I, I don't think it's a free kick. Um, it's just one of them things. It, it's we are the most unlucky team to get injuries this season. We've, it's got. We've got to be. Um, and then there's their West Ham. It's a head injury. Referee plays on. He's holding his face. The referee didn't see it. That's all. It's bad official. And then they scored a. A second half and, and the crowd was quiet. They were both there was boring, Steve. I think we they were saying, Oh, what, I was like, I wish I was home. It was, it was nothing, nothing happening, it was entertaining. Then, thank you to David Moyes, he took 
their striker off, what helped us, and you brought Calvin Phillips on, who's absolutely a pile of rubbish. Oh, so, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that did change the game. And Lewis Hall, I've got to give a big mention because I thought he was fantastic when he came on a Saturday. He was so direct. And Elianz and he come on, he was direct as well. I know the force was like desperation changes, but um, it was good. Like, we fought back, we never gave up. So it, when, the, like George said, when, when, when we scored the second goal, he had a feeling we could do something. So it was good for that. So, but um, just a like, gone something stupid again. Immature, you know, he knew he was on a yellow card, he kicked the ball away. So what's he doing that for? He needs to learn the pattern in because, like, he was a big mess yesterday, I think. Gordon Barnes didn't really do much yesterday, in my opinion. Um, but going, I, I, we did miss Andrew going on uh, Tuesday. Uh, but it was good. Like, we've got the three points. Like, I was happy. And Everton game, I don't think it was a fair result. I don't think we've done enough to win the game. They hit the post. We we had open goal. They had a couple of chances to score. We had a couple of chances to score. I think they were after the win because we could sense they were attacking us a lot more than they did. Um, but Dan Bird, they're okay at centre half, but I, I still cringe. I, I still don't trust them. Um, but Longstaff has played dread for the last two couple of games. Um, I don't know what's wrong with him. He's he, like, carry injury, but he's not playing great. And Isak shows his quality again. And then this morning he's been linked with Arsenal and Tottenham. Next chance to win this, so that's a bit um, scary. You know, get Champions League football, make one Champions League football, but hope he doesn't leave. Overall, four points. I'm not too, but I'm, I'm happy with the four points. It could have been one point. So I'm happy with the four points. That's, that's my assessment. Okay. Uh, Ian says, uh, last season we lost points against Leeds unless they're both relegated. Crystal Palace and Bournemouth, so I don't understand George's point. Um, well, <laughs> it's fairly simple. If you can beat the ones above, why the hell can't you beat the ones behind you? It's, it, mm. you know, it, it's frustrating. It really is. Ah, but <laughs> we've, got, we've got a massive injury. We've got any, we had any, we had any subs to bring on. You wouldn't, you, you tell yesterday. He wanted, he wanted three or four players in, fresh legs, but had nothing to bring on. Well, I, I, just don't, I don't think... I, I think we had enough to beat that Everton team, is my view, but never mind. It's, that's, I, don't that's, think it's, I don't think we did on the, the bench. Like, I, I think we well, I sense the draw. Like. OK, Chippers, give us your view on the two games that you've seen over the Easter weekend. Frustrating, really, because these are games we should have been taking six points out of. I'm not trying to feel entitled, but Two home games where, listen, where, yeah, West Ham out of the two was a tougher game and we got the three points. So you did the hard work on the Saturday and we, we should be following up. You need to back it up. And yes, yeah, Saturday was great. And before 70 minutes, it wasn't great. And as soon as David Moyes went to negative football, that helped us a lot because he just sat back on it. And you don't do that. You don't do that in football. And if, if anyone wants to learn that, we should be learning from that because we shouldn't be like what we did last night. We sat on a 1 0 and we shouldn't be doing that. Um, just Saturday for me, Eddie Howe got wrong first by bringing Kraft on and then he changed it by taking Kraft off and then he got a bit fortunate because we, they brought Calvin Phillips on on 3 1, which I was thinking, well, we were still so open, they could probably still get one on the break. and that just helped play in our hands. And as soon as we got that set and goal, they just fumbled like a pack of cards. They, they just had a bottle of boot them. And would, you could see we ended up possibly doing the win. We showed more fight and we showed more about us. And we kept going for the full game. They didn't. Um, I, was, I, was, you know, did, I didn't know what made it started because it was good and bad. It was the... It was, it was like the Leicester game all them years ago because the goals were exactly the same time as well, weren't they? Which was a bit freakish about it. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. again, again, you get the three points, you move on from Saturday. And last night, I was just very disappointed because you go 1 0 up early on against a bang up, against a team that's fighting a relegation battle who, as George said, came for a draw that had no intention to win that match last night. 
and we couldn't break them down for a second goal. And just it's disappointing. Um, I think Dan Byrne had has had his two best games of the season playing at centre half, and as like uh, everyone knows, he's an all for me. He's not a left back. Who was whole when he came on on Saturday was outstanding. He did a very good job last week considering he's played very little football. Um, and it proves that we looked better defensively for that with them playing in their p- correct positions. I think for me, drop Willock, fine, you drop Willock, but why aren't you dropping him stuff? Because he's done nothing for weeks. You drop Willock, who's just come back from a long term injury. I know he said Sean Longstaff was injured a few weeks ago, but then he said last week he's not injured. So why has he still got the same performance levels? And yet he doesn't take them off. I mean, Ellie Anderson didn't really do too bad last night, but obviously he's coming back from a long term injury, so he's managing his workload. But you've still got Longstaff on pitch. Like like I've said before, he's like an oil tank out with a football. He does nothing. Um, it's just fr- it's frustrating because, and then, you know, he brings Dummett on, another oil tank out with legs. And I, as I said, as George just said, I said beforehand, Alex Murphy for me. I've been sitting there tearing my hair out, seeing him coming on, thinking, and you know, Everton really aren't offering much. It's a perfect game to come on to. You know, that's you know, if he's the, going to be the future of Newcastle, why not we're going to see it? Why why don't we see when he's about? You know, Dan Bill was I'm pretty sure after ten minutes we're doing a job at left back against Ashley Young on the right hand side. Come on, man. He's a box nearly four year old. I'm pretty sure Dan Byrne would have seen him away for ten minutes. Um and then for me, Bravka should have saved the penalty. He died one arm. What's his other arm doing high up in the air? It's, he got one hand on it. If he dived with that's both hands, he gets both hands on it. I, I, I don't think it is. I think he, he's dived one arm. He, he's got two arms, dived with both. Same with Sally with Kudos' goal. He should have saved that because it wasn't a hard strike, in my opinion. But that's right. my opinion. I know people disagree, but. It, this this has got, been Debravka since he's come back in. He's always had it's, weak wrists, um, man. Yeah. Weak wrists. It's, it's, I'm sorry, but Pope saves both of them. In my opinion, Pope saves the penalty last night, and I think, personally, he saves Kudos' goal on Saturday as well. And that, People might think I'm being harsh, but if you want to be a good side, you've got to be critical because certain things like this has cost them a point. And as for what George said earlier about the points, we've lost 15 points against, against Everton, Bournemouth and uh, Luton, Luton in the six games. 15 Luton points. Forest. We've only got three yeah. points. Yeah. yeah. We've only got three points out of them teams. So there's six points out of all them games combined. Last season, they were, they were winning both games. So I'm sorry, but that, for me, if PIF are going to look at how in the summer, they're the games are going to look at and say, why didn't you win that game? Why did, why did we win last season? Things like that. And I don't want to bang out any. I don't want to nag nah, get everybody's tail all up. It's these are the reasons why if we don't qualify for you in the summer, they're the games they're going to look at and say, "Well, you've you've lost to a team that possibly has been relegated, like Everton might get relegated. You've lost to a team fighting relegation. They're the reasons why you're not getting into Europe." But he's got to have to plead a case for himself. I'm sorry, but last season was great and all that, but this season at times feels like a damp squib. It's Last night should have been a win. I don't care what anybody says. They had they barely offered anything, and it's frustrating because you know we're coming off a draw and it feels like a defeat. After after Saturday, you need to be backing it up by winning them games because that's what good teams do, and we couldn't do it. It's just it's frustrating. That that's the main word for frustrating. Oh, and speaking of Jerry the Berry, look at the bloody heck, honestly. So here. Here he is. We'll unmute him. He's walking around the hotel now. Trying Good to evening. Find... Good evening. Evening, lads. I'm trying to find somewhere that I can hear you, and that I'm not getting burnt to a to a crisp. So it's frigging boiling out here. Two secs. Can you still hear me? All? We can, mate. We I... Give us your right, views so... on those two games. I'll be quick in case I lose you. Um, first game. Uh, I thought we were shite for. Um, I thought we were. I thought we underperformed um, for the first section of the game, and then I, um, I thought we came. I thought we came better. Uh, obviously, towards the end, to state the obvious, but um, we, 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 
I think we dominated the first half without actually doing anything. I think it was very similar to actually the second game where we dominated without doing very much. But, you know, it all came up in the first game. And I think, um, not that I disagree with George, um, but I sort of agree with Darren that the difference between the first game and the second game was that we had an option on the bench or more than one option. Um, I don't think that by any stretch of the imagination that should have meant that we lost um, yesterday. Definitely not. We chucked that away. Stupid mistakes and not taking chances. But I could see it coming. Come 65 minutes, I went, his legs have gone, his legs have gone, his legs have gone. You know, I was looking around the team thinking, we are fucked here, there's no one to come on. You know, there's no one to come on here. And, um, and you know, we can all slate it dumb it and that, but to be fair, yeah, it was, um, it was a, poor, a poor challenge. But you see people getting away with that left, right and centre all over, all, over, all over the Premier League and all over the place. Yes, it's a penalty, I'm not denying that. But, you know, I just thought it's, it's just typical, you know. Um, but I think I, I listened to Eddie's post, uh, post-match sort of analysis or interview um, and I thought there were, that I agreed with him. There was a lot more positives than negatives. On another day, um, on another day, Sack gets an hat-trick there and we smash them. You know, we win 5-1 or 5-0. It just wasn't our day. And, and, and I guess like we could really turn around and say it's probably not been our season. But we still actually sit in top half. You know, and we're still in with a chance of getting somewhere. And it looks like, to me, the team, the unit is back together like it was. OK, that result didn't go for us, but I think the team unity, for me, is looking like it's getting back to what it was previously. They're fighting for each other. Um, massive bonuses. Anderson coming back in. I think Anderson's been excellent when he's come back in. Anderson's like, for me, a breath of fresh air. Lewis Hall... Well, I'm not even going to say anything more than just say Lewis Hall has to be our left back now. Um, and Dan Byrne was our man of the match yesterday, without a doubt. He was excellent playing in his proper position, centre back, where he should play. He's never been a left back. You know, I'm, I'm more of a left back than him, and I couldn't kick my own arse with my left foot. You know what I mean? So, like, um, a few lessons learned maybe over the last couple of weeks, and hopefully, you know, Lewis Hall gets back on and. Uh, um, oh, so, sorry. Should I say gets his chance now? We've got, you know, we've got what is it? Nine games to go. Nine games in it, yeah. And um, and I think uh, I think he's more than won his won his, won his chance to play at left back. One thing that does worry me is targets coming back. If you push target above Hall, I'll eat me flip flop. <laughs> and trust me, it's a rubbery, it's a rubbery little number. You don't want that in your mouth. So. <laughs> Good stuff, mate. Uh, and I see you're befriending the Mackhams out there. You had them on uh, prior to the show start. Oh, you couldn't, you couldn't write it. So I've got my. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Oh, sad Mackham bastard T-shirt on, and me pal over there. He just comes up to the bar, and he's like, and I just looked at his leg, and I seen the, I seen the cat, and then the SAFC, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, here we go. <laughs> and, Good stuff, mate. Top lad, top lad. Good lad. He was. I said he could come on in, on during the podcast, but he was good. He said, "No, I'll say hello before and to the lads, and then I'll fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff. We'll put you on mute again. We'll bring you back Cheers, in a second. Put you bring you back in in the second half, Magnus. Um, good to see you, mate. Uh, you're usually on Jordy's here. Jordy's there, but I invited you onto this one. Nice of you to come on. Uh, give us your views on those last two games. Well, uh, yeah, uh, every time I'm a little disheartened, I usually put uh, Sandal until I die on. <laughs> it always gives me up. Yeah, with regards to the game on Saturday, I mean, it, it, uh, we shouldn't be conceding this many goals, you know. And uh, it, it's, it, it was a huge shame to see three players uh, going off. And I was uh, actually a little bit worried about Fabian Schär as well, you know. It's like, it, it's... Who's next? You know, uh, we 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 barely can't fill a team anymore. And uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, it was a thriller on the last uh, twenty minutes. And and you know, uh, good good to see the fighting spirit. And uh, uh, if you guys were at the pitch, I mean, it m- it must have been amazing atmosphere. I could hear it in my living room. It was, it it was really really uh, the, the dogs. You know. Uh, 
So uh, uh, that is good to see, and uh, I could see a good atmosphere at, uh, uh, as well uh, last night. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, if, if I bring out the positives, I, I agree with uh, some of the comments uh, from before. Uh, Dan Byrne, and I've spoke a lot about this before, he looks absolutely outstanding in his left-back position. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see him play there and nowhere else on the pitch. I know he was sorting out the problem for the last year and a half or, or something like that. There's been lots of injuries and maybe a lack of quality on there. And he, uh, I'll take nothing of uh, what he's done for the club. But uh, this, uh, uh, like John Gibson has mentioned many times and many of us have spoken about it, this seems to be his position. And, and uh, this is where I want to see him for the remainder of the off. season. Centre half, yeah. Centre half, did I say? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's what I meant. The left uh, centre half. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I meant to say. Um, with with regards to the second game, yeah, uh, it it was a frustrating night. It was a, a, a difficult watch, but I, I agree with some of the fellas. Four points in those games is is not. Uh, too, I'm not too disheartened by that. You know, maybe it would have been easier to accept if it was the other way around. Uh, if, um, uh, if if we got a point against West Ham and uh, and three points against uh, Everton, but uh, four points all the same, uh, uh, nine games to play, and, and uh, if we look at the last twelve games, we've only really lost uh, three away games, and it was against uh, Chelsea, Arsenal, and Man City. You know. At the, I'm not too disheartened by by this, but uh, at the same time, really, really worried about the injury situation. Uh, you know, we haven't heard any really uh, uh, good news uh, lately. Or, or is, is anybody expected back uh, in in your uh, uh, to your knowledge? Or uh, Lewis Miley's definitely due back, um, but not for another couple of games. We don't think. Uh, then you've got Almiron and Liverman, who are probably going to be out a little longer than everyone thought. Nick Pope's. Uh, you know, edging his way back to recovery, but from from our perspective, it's going to be, you know, it's 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 going to be whether Lewis Holt's going to be available at the weekend. You know, some people are saying he went away with uh, he went off with cramp, but you know, it, you just don't know, do you? It could be another injury. Um, Murphy certainly limped off last night um, after that horrendous challenge from Tarkowski. You, you're just wondering is is there going to be another couple of players there who you know who 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 aren't going to be available for Fulham? But we've got young players, Alfie Harrison. Um, young Harrison's been added to the squad. Um, you know, as George mentioned at the top of the show, that's all we can do: add, add academy players in, young players in. So it could be a great opportunity for some of these youngsters to show, you know, show that, show that, you know, show what they're capable of. Absolutely, and I agree. There, there was an opportunity, maybe, to put Alex Murphy on yesterday, but uh, you know, I can understand why uh, Eddie Howe went, went with uh, the more experienced uh, option in, in the situation of uh, one nil. Uh, it would have been lovely to see, but it, even if a, a mistake like that would have happened for, from the youngsters, we would have been probably asking uh, the same question: Why, why the hell didn't he go for experience? So you know, it, it was maybe a little bit of a. Uh, a rock and a hard place for for him to decide in between those two players. Uh, on the other hand, what happened uh, happened. I'm, I'm not going to throw him under the bus. He hasn't played uh, any minutes since uh, November, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, loyal servant to the club. I um, um, really don't feel like throwing him under the bus. We still got a point and uh, uh, played a good game. Uh, our, our attacking force is absolutely smashing it at the minute. And uh, if, if any regrets, is probably the yellow card because I'm sure we would have done uh, done the job probably with uh, Gordon uh, in the team last night. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. What's your thoughts on the two games? Then, Kev. Um, two two contrasting games. A lot of the guys seem to be happy with four points. It, I guess it's just disappointing because of who who the game was against last night. But you know, we're gonna have you're gonna have tough games against relegation strugglers. Uh, you know, every every game is a tough game in the Premier League. Oh, of course, and um, only watched the well the better part of the second half of the West Ham game because I I would listen to the radio because I had to drop my kid off refereeing and stuff on Saturday. But um, yeah, it was just poor for seventy minutes on the West Ham game, and they were all decided to put the shirt on and put the boots on and play. Um, that was probably a false thing from tactical changes, injury, ball substitutions, and it looked like a lot better, a bit more energy within the game. 
um, just from what I've seen for the 45 minutes or whatever. So, yeah, it's just nice to see that we had a bit of grit and desire to get back into the game after going 3-1 down after being maybe harshly done by for their second, I believe it was, when Fabi Shaw was down, even though the referee was standing right over the incident. So I don't understand why he didn't check him for a possible head injury and all that sort of nonsense, but it is what it is. The referee made that decision. So we didn't react in the way that I would want my players to react and we just let, you know, give them 20 yards of space to have a free shot at goal. And I agree with Chippers. I think um, Dubravka should have saved that. Um, his position's too far over onto his near post. And if, you know, if if it's a better goalkeeper, then I think he's going to be saving it. Um, plus, he we went with his low hand, not his uh, high hand. Um, to, so, yeah, great result. Three points. We move on. To, he has a short turnaround for Everton. Um, and I agree. It's, I agree with George in the sense that it's frustration. Yes, but it's just sloppy technically. Yeah. We can't do that. We can't do the simple things right. And that's the frustration. I mean, we, I'll just jump to the second half. It was a, about a five minute span where we kept, couldn't keep keep the ball in play. We just kept keep kicking it out. I saw, you know, yes, it's black and white in the stand, there's an analogy, but are, are they playing? I mean, Sean Longstaff passed the ball out, Eddie Howe, four times or something like that. And I was like, you know, screw your head on. It's not hard. Pass the ball, keep it in control of the game. Um, so that was the, that's the frustration thing. It's the sloppy things in the game of passing and receiving, you know, playing under pressure, whatever, running around. I mean, it, it, it was just, again, the, the frustration of Everton. We knew how Everton were going to play. It was just getting the ball from Pickford up to that big lad, Beto, who was a big lump, and he couldn't he couldn't chop it back as it meant. I thought he was hopeless. But somehow he, he was effective in what he did. They were picking up seven, second balls. They played a weird shape. So we couldn't really, uh, like the, like George said about the West Ham, the, the flood, I thought they flooded the midfield, but I had Michael Bridges saying, no, we were flooding the midfield. And I thought, hold on, am I watching the same game here? <laughs> and that was that was last night. And so they played like with two holding midfielders of Onana and this, the, the other the other little version of Onana. And they had Decore playing off of them with McNeil and um, Ashley Young just bombing on. So it was, it was, they, they over, overloaded our three in midfield, but um, yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't really deal with that. The, the first and second ball, again, the, the midfield three were not great. I thought Bruno was probably the better of the, of the three, but the one ball in between the lines that got it, got, give us problems, give us issues, even in the first half. Um, because they had multiple opportunities, even though their finishing was even worse than ours. Um, but with all that said, I thought, again, agree with George in that we should have been three or four up at the, before half time, and we didn't, we didn't, didn't punish. Um, and the, the the movement off the ball was best be desired as crap. Um, there was no movement. Um, there was nobody running in behind. When they did, it was a, it was a snail's pace. It was very slow. It was very methodical. Um, and I think that's a trust of players in and around what they're trying to do. Um, in the in the final third of the field, so that was the that was the more we got into the uh, well entry into the box, you know the touches in the final third, but the quality wasn't there to go and take put the sword to Evan when we were one 0 up, and that was the the bigger problem for me that we didn't go and get that second goal before half time. Harvey Bond should score, Isaac should score, um, but it was just we, we just seemed like the overcomplicated and dilly dally. And and have a have a again lack of quality in that part of the pitch, and that's the most, that's the hardest thing to do. And that's the score. Um, and for when we conceded, um, it, it was if you're looking at it defensively, it's Paul Dummer's got the wrong side um, and letting Ashley Young inside of him, and he's that he's had no option or choice but to wrestle him to the ground. Really, so defensively, it was poor. Um, maybe could have won the first won the first ball or the second ball, but it didn't even get to that point. Um, yeah, so dummy was wrong side. Um, this, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Yeah, in the tone of the second half was slow. It was obvious what was going to happen. Agree with Ian um, that you could see it, what was going to happen after when I said kicking, passing the ball out of play. You could just you could just see the narrative being played out. They were going to get they were going to get one at some point, and we didn't know how to deal with it. Um, I want to move on to Sean Longstaff if I could. And people saying he's been poor for 
a couple of games. It's been months that he's been poor. It's not been we. It's months. You could say all season, but um, I was watching him yesterday specifically when my wife was watching the, the the game itself, and he was eighty percent of it. He was jogging and walking, and you're playing centre midfield, and you've got Jacob Murphy doing your job, tracking runners, which he does as a wide man. But Sean Longstaff got to do the same work going the other way, and he didn't. And when he goes on the attacking side of it, it's just the same pace. It's the same. There's no. Change of speed, no recovery running. There's no nothing going forward like he was last last season. So in my opinion, I'll just take him out the side completely and put somebody in there who's got a bit more bit of pace. And I would have, I would have not taken um, Elliot Anderson off yesterday because of his recovery and his minutes. But I would have taken Sean Longstaff and putting Joe Willick on that right side because you're going to get a little bit more energy. And I thought that was a poor decision for Benny Howe, but I understand it from Anderson's perspective. Um, but yeah, so again, it's just struggling to play teams who are fighting for something and play mid, mid to low blocks. We can't break teams down, and that's that's the worrying thing when you play teams in and around us, lower end. Then we struggle, and we can't and we can't break teams down, and and that's that's the, that's the big worry for me. That if you want to progress and advance and get into champions leagues and this and that and european competitions you're going to have to we'll have to learn and learn quickly how to break a team down and we can't do it some honest assessments from the lads tonight to be fair everybody is uh, i think is, is, is got it on the money we're gonna have a quick ad break and then we'll look ahead to the match against fulham at the weekend a big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com. Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com or telephone 0800 25 45 25 3. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, Handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. They're a local company from Morpeth and there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video. Click the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one-off £25 fee. You get a cup, a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find the match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year. NUFC Matters Live will be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. Tickets start at £15 and you can get them from Ticketmaster. UK. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website tynetheatreandoperahouse.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the North East Footy Breakfast Show live on Toon Radio weekdays 7 till 9am on DAB smart speakers and the tune uk.com don't forget as well end of season do 20th of july takes place at the irish center and uh super mac and gibble will be live at the event as will george the long sands are going to do an acoustic set uh starts at five o'clock and finishes late tickets are at tenner go to newcastlelegends.com to buy your tickets today and that event is in aid of dementia matters got quite a few announcements coming out about them over the course of the next few months and get yourself onto wow chat tickets are 19 pound for an evening with peter beardsley that's uh the 2nd of june again at the tyneside irish center or you can go to newcastlelegends.com 
and buy your tickets today. And don't forget, if you're a member, I'm doing a live chat tonight at quarter past seven for members only. Quarter past seven, get yourself on to there if you are a member tonight. Okay, Newcastle take on Fulham. Uh, it's uh, an away game and it takes place this Saturday. It is a three o'clock start and not televised, uh, of course. Uh, the third time we'll have played Fulham, uh, we played them, of course, at St James's Park, beating them 3 0 in December. We then went on to play them in the FA Cup uh, with a 2 0 win. Uh, against them in that competition as well. Uh, uh, this could be our second double of the season if we can find a way uh, to beat Fulham at Craven Cottage, having already taken six points off Aston Villa. Team news, where well, we know Anthony Gordon returns from suspension. Kieran Trippier, Tino Livramento and Miggy Almiron have already been ruled out. Uh, joining that uh, ever-growing injury list again, which includes Lascelles, Pope, Wilson, Joe Linton, Botman, um, Miley as well for this weekend. Tonali, of course, suspended. Matt Target's availability is unclear at this moment in time. Ahead of our visit uh, to Craven Cottage, they were beaten 3-1 against Nottingham Forest on Tuesday night. At home, Marco Silva side have won nine times. They've drawn once and lost the other five. They've also won successive games at Craven Cottage 3-0, beating Brighton and Spurs by that margin. New referee for the game on Saturday, Sam Allison, has only taken charge of Newcastle in reserve team fixtures. Uh, and on VAR, it is Jared Gillette. And uh, yeah, George... Big game this um, for us, the the Fulham game. Uh, you know, after after the disappointment of uh, of the draw against Everton, we've got to get back to winning ways if we want to keep the pressure on those teams above us and uh, keep the distance between those teams behind us, George. And that's why they're all big games, Steve. <laughs> if we if we want to be doing anything, they're all big games. We've got to uh, got to uh, see what we're made of. It's it it's a it's a sad fact, but you've said it. When things like this injury list pops up, it sometimes gives an opportunity. And through through the years, I've seen people make their careers on a successful debut, you know, if they unexpectedly got a game. And uh, I think Howe's in, in a hard corner. He, I've got to admit that. He, in his, uh, he, he's got to have show some courage and um, trust in some of the youngins that he's he's got around him. Uh, he brought them into the squad. Then it's time some of them got a game. Um, it, uh, I mean, we're thread bay, uh, so he, 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 it, the team nearly picks itself. Um, I would, and, and I've got to say, in discussions about goalkeeper, De Brava would not be in goal for me on Saturday. Um, Carrius would would be in goal for me. De Bravka's got uh, Chris Packett hands out when he calls them, and he's absolutely right, absolutely right. Um, and uh, he. he you know, he he can't, that can't um, give the people that are feeling in front of him the sort of uh, confidence that they had last year. Um, so, um, difficult to talk about teams when we, we realise it's it's threadbare and it, it's probably those that fit's going to play. But we still should have enough to beat Fulham. I keep going back to this. We still should have enough to beat these teams and challenge these teams. So, um I mean, in fairness, the senior professionals like Bruno, he's been playing his socks off. The lad's been playing his socks off. He hasn't hid. You know, I've seen occasions when the team's been in that sort of position and the, the senior people go for a walk, they go and disappear. Bruno hasn't. He's 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 really uh, given it his all. So, um, without knowing what the team would be, um, it's difficult to make judgments but I, I'd like to see some of the young ones be given a given a chance to show their metal and we still should have enough to beat uh, Fulham so do you want a prediction Steve yes please so I, I'm still going with uh, a Newcastle win it'll be a 1-0 probably a, a Dan Byrne header I would think in the penalty era okay Ian will come to you because you've got a low battery mate and uh Oh, he's disappeared. There we go. His battery's, his battery's <laughs> low. It's that low, it's disappeared. Is he back? <laughs> he's coming back in, I think. There we go. Right, OK. There you are. You're back in and uh, you're unmuted. If you can unmute yourself. You've muted yourself, Ian. I can't, I can't unmute you. You've muted yourself. <laughs> there we are. Is that better? Perfect, yeah. mate. Yeah. Perfect. 
So Fulham Thanks. away, mate. How do you see this game going? Uh, we've got to win the game. We should be, win the game. There's no reason we shouldn't win the game. Um, <clears throat> we're a better football team than them even playing reserves. We've got reserves that can come in <clears throat> who can do a job, I think, that aren't getting a chance. The likes of Alex Murphy. I know other people, I think, um, I can't remember who mentioned him, George, or somebody definitely mentioned Murphy before. I think he, from what I've seen of him uh, pre-season, he could do a job. Um, and it's Fulham, let's be honest. I'm not slating Fulham, but they, they, they are, they're not a bad football team, but, they, they, you know, we should be able to play, put 11 players out there that will beat them without any, without worrying about substitutes. But, you know, let, let, let's see what happens. It's all about injuries for us, isn't it, this year? So, um, that's all I've got to say. And I am literally just about to uh, uh, self-combust, if that's the right word, because it's... <laughs> Friggin' boiling here. And I'm like, Jerry the Berry. Um, and my battery's about to run out. So have a good one, lads. Thanks very much. And you, and on. enjoy your holiday, Ian. Yeah. Love I'll, I'll, send you them, I'll send you them dirty bikini pictures as well, George. Don't oh, worry. I've been waiting all week. My tongue's hanging out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, you hey, have a good holiday. George, George, you can come with us next time, pal. Don't worry. Oh, I've, I've packed my case now. It's, it's, it'll be packed before <laughs> you get home. Okay, <laughs> Love you, lads. Take thanks. it easy. Good to have him on. Okay, uh, Chippers, look ahead to Fulham, mate. What's your what's your uh, thoughts on the game, and what's your your prediction going to be? Depends what Newcastle turns up. If it's if it's the twenty yeah. minutes against West Ham for ninety yeah. minutes, then we'll base them. Uh, if it's the <laughs> one that turned the second half last night, it'll do. <laughs> God knows what will happen. We'll just put them men behind the ball and just frustrate them and. Uh, Anthony going, being back is going to be massive. He, it's like, I mean, you add the saying, like a new sign, and well, he will feel like a new sign because he's had a week off for this game and he's had a, he's going to be fresh, so they, that's going to be a big plus. It'll give an option whether if he wants to put Barnes on the bench or if he wants to put Murphy on the bench, it gives him an option for that bench. Um, personally, I think it'll be Barnes because I think three games in seven days for somebody who's just come back from hamstrings probably a bit too much for him. So I think Barnes will probably come out. I like to see Longstaff taken out and probably play Willock, Bruno, and Anderson in midfield to see what that looks like for legs. But I don't think he will. I think he'll stick with Longstaff, unfortunately, which will mean we'll be playing with ten men anyways. So that'll be a hard, hard, hard start. But we've got all right form against Fulham recently. I think the last time they beat us at Craven Cottage was was it in the Championship when Rafa when we got relegated. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. the last time they beat us. So. We've done all right against them recently and touch wood we can keep that going and they they got battered off for us last night so I would I would expect them to have a reaction but I would think we want we should have a reaction because you know I would like to think the players are disappointed over drawing a game last night which they needed to get over the line they couldn't do so so plus playing away might actually help you know I mean We'll, we'll go on about how bad we've been, but if you look at the weird games we've lost the turn of the year, it's only really Liver is it Liverpool lost and the Man City we've lost since the turn of the year away from home in all competitions, which is it's not bad on paper. It was just the man out of the defeats was the bad thing, but I, I, I think we'll beat them. I think Golden Bay and back will just he'll have the bit between his teeth as long as he does nothing stupid like get too stupid, you know, stupid booting or whatever. I, I think we'll beat them two one. I think it'll be that type of game where. We'll get a goal. We'll get a second goal after half time. And I think we'll make changes in the second half and they'll get a late goal back, but we'll we'll get it through it and you know, we'll have a free week for Spurs next week. So I am going to say for a two one win and I think it'll be easier because he just can't stop scoring at the minute. And I think Gordon will score as well, because he's I mean, he's been fantastic for this season. So I think two one Gordon and up for us. Okay. What's your thoughts then, Magnus? Looking ahead to the uh, the game at the weekend. Oh, you're on mute, Magnus. You need to unmute yourself. All right, all right. Here I am. Uh, I, I am uh, cautiously optimistic. I uh, uh, usually when Gordon starts, I am quite calm, and and uh, he's he's been uh, outstanding this season. Uh, probably. For me, the the best player of the squad, the most consistent and and uh, yeah, absolutely uh, amazing. What what a progress and uh, making it to the national team. Uh, he's just been outstanding. So that calms me down a lot. I mean, I guess it, it will be 
Murphy on the other plank and, and uh, the, the, the rest of the team is kind of auto-picked. Uh, I agree with uh, Tip as uh, I would like to see uh, Longstaff being rested. He, he really didn't have a good game last time around. We know he's been carrying uh, some uh, nickel here and there. And uh, uh, I, I think this is a chance to uh, swap it up uh, and uh, um, uh, start start with uh, uh, Joe Willock, Bruno and uh, uh, Anderson. Oh. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, well, do we need to be worrying about the, the defense? Of course, yes. Uh, but did anybody know? It seemed like almost uh, Trippier was about to start the game on Saturday. He was uh, already in his outfit, almost like warming up. And uh, like it's almost like uh, something happened uh, uh, just before the kickoff or something. Or before the lines, uh, lineup was... Uh, uh, sort of uh, brought to the open. Uh, does anybody know if he had a backlash in in his recovery? Or sounds like it. Yeah, there's no, there's very little come out about that. We just know that he's potentially going to be out for a couple of weeks. So something's yeah. clearly happened, but no official confirmation from the club on on any of these other injuries yet. Yeah, no, but I I, I do feel like we're going to win this game. I, I really do think we have enough to uh, beat uh, Fulham. I'm slightly worried about the, this uh, Munez guy that is uh, now a part of my fantasy team. He's he's been really good in in, in Fulham, and and uh, I, I I just sold uh, Ollie Watkins for him. <laughs> Yeah. But I hope he doesn't. Uh, I'm really hoping he doesn't perform too well against us, you know. But I am slightly worried about him uh, with regards to the goalkeepers. Uh, I, I would like to see Karius take one game, but maybe after after the latest news, uh, uh, is his head uh, uh, in uh, England or is it in Italy? Uh, it, you know, it, it, maybe it's uh, you know uh, we. we we know what uh, Dubravka brings to the game, and I'd like to say something positive about him. I think he's always really good at uh, bringing the ball back to game. You know, I, th I think he's better than most in that. You know, uh, regardless of his decision making and maybe his hesitation, I really enjoy uh, to see how fast he looks up and, and finds the right pass. So. Uh, I have to give him something positive, uh, uh, and uh, for me uh, on uh, Saturday, I'm uh, I'm seeing this as a victory, two-one to Newcastle, because uh, right now I don't see us keeping a clean sheet. Okay, Kevin. Totally agree with what everybody said. To be honest, um, it, basically we should win the game. I think we've got. You know, I'm, don't really delve into Fulham and what they've got. I don't really care, but um, we should win the game. With all depends on who can control the game whilst in possession of the ball. Because I know we know Fulham like to get on the ball and keep it and move it and be very again methodical in the way they play. Um, so again, are we going to have that high intensity? Are we going to have that high press? Uh, how how is Eddie going to approach it? But if we have the ball, I think if we move it quicker than what we have done, I think especially over the past well last night because it was slow it was like painfully slow so this could be it, it could this one could be a, a complete bore in terms of a tactical um uh, a tactical war if you if you like between the two coaches because again it, this both team one will want to try and keep it and try and possess the ball so you, again like chipper said depends which Newcastle United are going to show up on the day that ultimately so um and lastly um Who's going to uh, have the better quality in the final third? Uh, that's what I'm going to really hang my hat on. Who's going to have that quality? And I think if we go with Barnes, Isaac and Gordon, I think we might have a bit too much on them. Um, along with Bruno and Anderson and Willick in the midfield. And I'll keep the back five as the same. Um, but I think if we start with those six, I think we'll have too much. And, I'll, and I'm going to go with the 2-1. Two, 2-1? One. Two, one. Okay. Darren? Your views? Yeah, I think it'll be a draw. I don't, I don't, I don't think we'll win. I'll go for one-one if we're lucky. I think Fulham's. Uh, we're just. I don't, I just don't think we've got the. Um, I don't know. Our way of form hasn't been top notch this season, so I'll take a draw now. I'll be great. I, I would love a win, but I, I do fancy a one-one. Uh, I can't see keeping a clean sheet, so. You know, I'd 
one one out, out my opinion for Sadie. I'll agree with uh, Kevin. I'll go for the team he selected there. It's, it's the same. So that's my that's my views. Okay, great stuff tonight, lads. As always, I'm going to be back on in about 15 minutes. I'm doing a, a live chat for the members. So if you are a member and you've uh, joined the channel officially on YouTube, then uh, you will get that. Uh, tonight will be on for about half an hour, 40 minutes. But uh, thanks to George. Thanks to Sam. Thanks to Darren. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Magnus. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Ian on his holidays as well. I'm back. Uh, officially live on the channel at 6 o'clock tomorrow with Super Mac and Gibbo. And don't forget, the Amigos is 5 o'clock on Friday. Take care, guys. Good chat. Yeah.